السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ آئی اسٹارٹ ود گریٹنگز آف پیس مائی ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹل مین اٹس بین اے وائل سنس آئی میڈ سم تھنگ کریٹڈ اے کانٹینٹ ریلیٹڈ ٹو سی آئی ایم اے اور اے سی سی اے بٹ آئی اسٹل کیپ گیٹنگ ای میلس کوریز انکوائریز اباؤٹ سی آئی ایم اے اباؤٹ اے سی سی اے اباؤٹ دا سیما اسٹریٹجک کیس اسٹڈی وتھ اے سی بی دا کوچنگ پروگرام ایٹسیٹرا so i wanted to create this video around the most common query i keep getting so that i can pro easily share the video for any inquiries in particular but also hoping that it would be helpful for any student who is considering the start of a professional qualification now i want to say this first this is not a discouraging or this is not a direct denial to say that hey doing sima or doing scca or doing double at or any of these qualifications it could be a local chartered qualification that you have in your respective countries but my my focus is on professional qualifications and this is not to say you should reject them outright the thing is the media machine the marketing machine of these organizations is huge they spend tens and thousands of dollars if not millions at times purely to market themselves you know you te- you type something like cima or acca on the google search bar and then you go f- on facebook you go out to any of the websites you all you start seeing is advertisements it could be linked in anything but you're flooded by advertisements by these organizations they spend a lot of money on marketing and not just the organizations themselves the tuition providers there's plenty of tuition providers all across, across the globe you can check that list out it is an extremely lengthy list there is no standardization really and uh, there is a vetting process etc but there's just so many tuition providers all over the world and they themselves market because they need students and they earn their money through the tuition and i was involved with CIMA and ACCA for quite a long time too long if you ask me but for almost uh, 10 12 years and not only did i work as a lecturer within that space but also for a few years i was able to work within the marketing scope of these qualifications and see quite a bit so based on all of that because you have so many reasons given by these organizations and the tuition providers to tell you why you should start a professional qualification what is the reason to motivate you i actually wanted to give you a contrasting look to say why you shouldn't consider starting a professional qualification such as this and i want to particularly exclude cfa chartered financial analyst from this conversation so this video has nothing to do with uh, cfa having said that i also want to add this disclaimer the idea that if you are someone who has already started the qualification maybe you are at the operational or the management level or you are at the professional level of acca or you are doing the strategic case study now it's too late to give up even if you wanted to that's part of the trick right so this is not for those kind of students this is also not for students who are potentially graduates who have degrees who are simply looking to up their professional game by belonging to a professional body no this video is mainly targeting those of you who are considering who are at that initial stage of post secondary education you know you're right out of high school maybe you're just you know, you're 20 25 30 feeling kind of lost in your life you don't know what to do what next uh, what is the next step for you in life and then here comes this uh, beautiful advertisement or you meet a marketing executive or you hear about a scholarship scheme by a tuition provider saying 100% scholarship for uh, past rugby players of this school and that school if you walk in and start the qualification 100% scholarship uh, for tuition for the foundation level etc right so you have this kind of thing going on so it is for you now let's take a look at what we have here the first reason 
I can give you is that there is absolutely no academic benefit through any of these qualifications over a reputed degree. So if you do not have a degree, if you don't, if you are right out of high school and you're looking, you have the opportunity to go for a degree, then choosing this qualification over a degree or choosing this qualification without having a pathway because there are many organizations, many providers, many education institutions which provide a bit of a hybrid model. They offer you a degree and the professional qualification uh, with certain conditions. So unless you have that sort of thing at the very least, which still I don't really endorse, the idea is that by choosing any of these qualifications, you will never ever have that benefit of uh, being able to access, of what you get to access by having a degree, a reputed degree from a reputed university, which is well established, which has a decent university ranking. So you need to go for something like that. If you're going to spend 2 million, 3 million uh, in rupees, or you're going to spend thousands and thousands of dollars or thousands of pounds, might as well spend it on something that is going to give you long-term value. So that is the first point. The second is these qualifications can be extremely expensive and really uh, not worth the investment in the long run, especially for students who might consider this at the entry level. So you're an entry level post-secondary education student and you're trying to go for this kind of qualification. And then the hook most of the time are scholarships, discount schemes, offered by tuition providers saying for foundation level, I'll give you 50%. For foundation level, I'll give you 100% if you're a uh, rugby player or a cricket player or whatever. And if you were a prefect in your school, then we will give you a 100% scholarship and whatnot. So I've been in the space where, you know, <laughs> all these different tools have been used. And beyond the... So those kind of hooks are used to bait you into the qualification because the tuition providers, you know, they don't really care much about the examination and the quality of education. All they care about is getting the tuition fee from you. And I've seen the worst. I've actually seen the worst <laughs> tuition providers in my life who have truly, purely been fanatics of the tuition fee that they can earn. And they only chase that with no regard to the quality of education they provide with no absolute regard to the well-being of the student in the long term. So they can be extremely expensive in that sense. How so? A little bit of detail. One is every single exam has to be paid for, right? So you're paying separately for the exam. You're paying an annual subscription. If by some chance, some miracle, you clear the paper, and you qualify, you become an affiliate or you, you graduate, then you have to continue to pay the membership fee. You have to retain your membership status and without making the payment. The payment is the only thing, the absolutely only thing. There is no merit-based concern. There is no uh, different schemes of valuing students depending on their results maybe. There is no um, first class, second class, third class honors. There is nothing like that. There is no GPA associated. So there is really not many things that you would usually get from a degree and a valuable one at that through these qualifications. So it's really not worth the investment. Anyone who is considering uh, these kind of qualifications and, and you've really made up your mind and you're really convinced with the reasons that uh, the tuition providers and these organizations provide what you can do is do a comparison try to do a life cycle costing which is basically looking at the total cost for the entire program that it will really uh, cost ask the tuition provider okay fine you're giving me 100% discount for the foundation what's the cost for the second level what's the cost for the third level what if I fail one of the papers in the third level how much do I have to pay? What's the cost for the final level? What if I fail that paper? What's the cost for taking the exam? How many times can I come for your tuition? In case if I fail a paper, how many times can I come back to your tuition 
without making any additional payments what is the cost for resitting an exam what is the cost for appealing an exam what is the cost for the final case study paper what is the cost for the objective case study paper objective paper get the values sum it up get the total and with that total see okay is this something that is really worth the timeline and not only match it with the timeline also see what alternate options you have to use that money for can you do a degree is there a reputed well known degree that can be done with this money maybe you're paying a little bit more maybe even at times paying a little bit less what kind of progression pathways are available for you after that so there are many aspects to consider and i can tell you it is not cheap so if someone paints a picture that this is far cheaper and for example you know some of the one of the tactics that some of these organizations use is they say okay fine um if you come and join with our organization and you do the qualification after the end of the qualification you get a degree and you can qualify for other 12 other qualifications as well so you come in to do the degree with us and then by the end of that program you are a sima qualified person you are a acca qualified person you are a chartered student you are a double at qualified person you have like 12 or 15 or 20 names of different organizations behind you but this is this is horrible because the reality is not that every situation that is pitched in this manner has a condition it has a condition saying regardless of whether you complete the degree successfully okay if you want to be a sima qualified person you have to take these 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 exams and to take these 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 exams you have to make these 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 payments so we will waive off one of these payments but then when you progress to the ne- next level and you have to take three more papers those three papers cost this much so you initially start the degree thinking oh okay fine it's going to cost me 5000 pounds or 10000 pounds or whatever that's what you think but then only when you hit the second year or the third year you realize you thought that was the case but you what you didn't really inquire about was okay fine after i graduate and if i want to get an additional qualification then it's going to cost me more even though that is viable and that seems reasonable and you don't want to argue that at that point the thing is the fact that that kind of messaging the messaging that hey you're going to be able to do this with 5000 dollars or whatever to bait you into doing the qualification that is unethical that is wrong in my opinion that is outright wrong and i have seen so many students in my life who got baited into choosing certain qualifications or certain programs because of that kind of marketing so be very careful get all of the information the next point is something that i briefly touched on you must maintain subscription and membership to even receive a copy of your transcript or call yourself a member use the letters etc you know when you do these qualifications the actual true benefit you know the the actual purpose of pursuing higher education end of the day is to provide proof for those who need proof you want to do a masters you have to show your transcript of your bachelors you want to proceed to a phd you have to show proof you want to apply for immigration you have to present proof you have to present the documentation so the transcript is a key document and do you know that cima does not issue a transcript a transcript is not issued to any student who is not maintaining active status but this is completely out of place because a transcript is a proof of documentation about the fact that you took these subjects and that you made a humongous effort and these are the scores you got that's it so sima actually used to do this before a few years ago what they used to say is for someone who didn't have the money to pay the subscription to maintain the active status continuously they would say look we'll give you a copy of the transcript that's what you can do because that is the right thing to do 
but we cannot issue you the membership letter the letter that says you are a member so this is for someone who has completed the qualification right but the transcript was used to be issued but now if you look at the situation now today let's say there's a student who doesn't have a job who is unable to pay and he has applied for a new job and the job is now accepting him but they want proof about his qualifications and they are asking for his transcript or he wants to somehow get into a college a postgraduate diploma and then the college is requesting your transcript and then if he goes back to CIMA and requests a transcript they will say you're not active pay the subscription and we will give you the transcript this is unbelievable absolutely oppressive in my opinion you might disagree obviously sima might would disagree i really hope that they change these rules all i want is that i want every student who ever undertakes any qualification to have access to their transcript letter of good standing membership letter those letters they can keep for themselves but at least the fact that the only proof a student has is the transcript how can an organization deny the issuing of a transcript coerce the student to paying money so beyond this even to call yourself a member they'll send you a warning letter if you uh, or an email if they notice that you're using the letters acma cgma saying you haven't paid the subscription because of that you haven't a membership fee because of that you cannot use these letters this is a flag if you don't remove it if you don't take it off then we are going to uh, be uh, considering you as a a member not in a good standing and we are going to remove you from the register etc you would already be removed from the register but then you know they'll put you under a disciplinary list or whatever you cannot use the letters obviously so those nominal benefits those benefits that really you know are things that they just use to market uh, are also attached seriously attached to the subscription and the membership investment you should make So that's another reason now with the degree program you will not have that they will never tell you you have to pay this much and this much you have to maintain an annual subscription in order to get the transcript no 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 if you do a degree from a reputed university the only thing maybe maybe they would charge is the service fee or the postal charge to send it somewhere other than that because they understand that a transcript is a right of a student who has committed so many years of their life to that education lack of transparency so this is a major concern i have with these qualifications because what's going on behind the scenes is very limited how the syllabuses are designed uh, what kind of <coughs> mechanism is going on this kind of information is very difficult to access this is very limited information that is being given uh, at the <coughs> and for the students right for the students perspective um, because even tuition providers have access to a reasonable amount of information because you see the business model how it works is that let's say for example cima they would have the tuition providers and they have a very strong relationship with these tuition providers because they know that the tuition providers are a primary source of how they get their base how they get their numbers right so while that being the case do the tuition providers provide that transparency back to the students absolutely not that's one thing but beyond that another point related to lack of transparency is the examination results especially with the case study examinations i find this horrible and i am not in touch with the model uh, well i am very much in touch with the model but the feedback is absolutely i mean it's funny to me <laughs> 
the feedback that CIMA provides in particular or ACCA. You see these qualifications, you do the exam and then the exam paper you submit or you send your paper. And once it's gone, it's gone. You never see it again. You have no idea what happened. There are no um, reviews provided. There is no feedback provided. So I have worked with strategic case study students who have failed six times, seven times. And not just with one or two students. I have worked with probably tens and tens of students. At least maybe I can tell you from memory Students who have failed more than five times, I have at least worked with nearly 20 or 20 to 30 students who have failed the strategic case study examination more than five times. And the strategic case study exam, the final exam, is the most expensive examination. You see the pattern, right? The further you go up the ladder in CIMA, the more expensive the exam becomes. Why is that? Because the business model makes sense. Because the further student goes and gets closer to that finishing point, the student is very much committed to completing the qualification. So he doesn't want to give up. He doesn't want, I have only one paper. I have only two papers. Let's just get this done. Oh my God, I failed fourth time. I failed the fifth time. Still, let me try. I just have this one paper. And Alhamdulillah, thankfully, by Allah's support, I have been able to help all of the students who came to me. I have been able to help them clear the examination. But in almost all these cases, what we figured out, and there are many interviews on my YouTube channel with uh, some of these students, what we figured out is it was really not the student's fault. The idea is that these students, they don't have the transparency. They, if they only, when they fail the first time, if Seema had provided them their script with clear feedback, saying this is where you went wrong, this was your mistake, they would have easily passed the second time. So why, uh, for instance, why SEMA assists with ACB, the coaching program for the few years it lasted, or the few years I was committed to doing it, uh, was so successful was because what we usually did was we did, worked on the mock exams, figure out what the mistakes are of students. So we figured out these mistakes in order to address them. But if CIMA, for instance, had been providing feedback and had been giving a copy of their scripts and showing them, hey, these are your mistakes, this is what you would have done, then I didn't, my job would be redundant. I wouldn't have even need, been needed. The SEMA SES with ACB coaching program wouldn't have to exist because the student, once a student submits a paper, it's marked and it's provided with feedback, the student can really understand what went wrong, what did I do wrong, and then address it. So I really hope, if not anything, at least by seeing this or watching this video, someone at CIMA decides to take steps toward improving their level of transparency, especially with the examination results, the whole grid system, you know, five core activities, and they have an arrow saying improved or arrow upward and arrow downward does absolutely nothing for the student. It has no value whatsoever. Now, this kind of issue is quite non-existent, especially in degree programs. So if you choose a reputed degree program for a well-reputed university, it could be a local university, uh, a public university, or a private university which is well-reputed, then you have complete access to the work that you do. And you have access to your lecturers who are the ones who mark those papers and they will provide the feedback and you can talk to them and you can have one-to-one -one meetings with them. You can request appointments with them and speak to them and try to understand. And to the extent that they are willing to be helpful, you will have an extremely high level of transparency. And the tuition model. So this is a, a big criticism that I have. You see, end of the day, this is all business. When, you, when someone 
is in the game for as long as i have been we start to clearly see the pattern and we start to see that there is really no you know well being of the student in the hearts and minds of these people the only thing you know that they care about is the money they make and the more money they make the more happy they are and the more inclined to push these qualifications further and to promote them further because they can you know feed that cycle and make more and more money but if you take these business models these organizations are completely backed by the power of the tuition providers private educators private tuition providers who just you know bring together a group of people who call themselves lecturers and then start teaching these qualifications and then try to send a few emails back and forth with these uh, sema or acca or these kind of organizations and try to set up that official kind of link with them while providing this tuition and then you know obviously uh, these organizations they want the student base so they would provide any and every support and they'll call you a gold partner or a platinum partner or a silver partner and all of those things give you that credibility to the best of their ability help that to market etc but ultimately behind all of those things all of that facade what really is happening is simply plain and simple business <laughs> you know you get a student to come into your education institution or what you call an education institution you get them to pay the money and you get them to commit to this and then once they are hooked just keep feeding that cycle and keep going and then once that student is out of that first stage right you get them to do the first few exams or first level then you know that you've succeeded at least to a certain extent and then it's all about trying to keeping the student continue their education in your institution itself but by that time many students figure out the situation and then they make their choices saying you know for this subject i'm going to go there for this subject i'm going to go to this other institution and many students start to be very objective and look at the shortest possible way to clear these exams successfully but by then they are already hooked so i can talk for one day about how the entire tuition model is the backbone of sustaining these organizations but that would be totally redundant and not only that from the perspective of cima or acca we have we see that they benefit largely from the tuition providers and the tuition providers themselves have in their opinion have much at stake because this is their primary source of income for most of them so they are quite committed to their relationships with these organizations and therefore they are willing to go any distance they can to maintain that relationship to maintain a look of credibility to show the student that this is the best decision they can take in their lives so it is from that sort of place that kind of marketing comes so in turn sometimes unintentionally sometimes unintentionally i have to say that in turn what it what happens is it leads to a very manipulative promotional scheme very manipulative uh, marketing effort and that is definitely something i can vouch for i've seen it i've seen it from the inside i've been in that space i've been in marketing presentations i've been the marketer i've i've spoken to students promoting these qualifications time and time again at a time in, of my life where i was quite we would say short sighted <laughs> and ignorant and you know with the sima ss with azb coaching program how much experience and exposure i had to the world of cima so i know how manipulative it can be so if you are choosing these qualifications it has to be done not based on their marketing it has to be done on your terms because you know that this is something you want to do nothing else if you don't have a good enough reason to do this and you have better alternatives you should definitely go for that 
lack of standardization so this is another issue because when you get into these qualifications you will start hearing cfo pathway that pathway this pathway there are these entry routes for o level students for a level students for university students for master students for phd students for people who have retired for people who are senior managers everyone basically they haven't spared anyone at all every single person has a entry pathway but it all leads to either a pathway of entering at the second level or the third level and then you have to do a bunch of exams you have to pay for them and then you know get the same qualification so everybody is pitched the same thing but in different colors and what do we do we also fall for that so if a phd graduate of harvard college or stanford is also inclined to consider something like cima when he is 50 or 55 years old while we also have a 16 year old kid coming out of kerala who is also thinking about you know starting cima what kind of disparity is this so that is a completely and both of those things have happened i know a harvard graduate who wanted to do cima and who actually managed to succeed after having failed couple of times and not due to any reason of the graduate himself is a very capable individual in fact a very well reputed which is why i'm not naming him while also we have thousands if not tens of thousands of ordinary level students kids with 16 18 20 years old aspiring to the same educational aspiration that very senior individual had i cannot put to words the disparity in that story so this lack of standardization and all those options in the middle for senior managers for nurses for that and for this and you know for everyone different qualifications have different ways of promoting this but the idea is that end of the day there is no clear standardized outlook seemingly underlying objective to acquire the student and maintain the student life cycle for maximum payout okay so what i mean here very simply is that once you get hooked to it students so this is from feedback from students right students themselves have told me i feel like i'm stuck on this i'm stuck in sema i've been doing sema for 8 years i've been doing sema for 12 years i don't know it's like i'm stuck and i cannot really get out of this and i've been paying and i've failed 20 times different papers and all those occasions i've keep kept on paying what am i going to do you know what I, i don't know whether i made the right decision so this kind of thing now add to this this is student feedback add to this the fact that there is no examination transparency there is no feedback provided when you put these two together you can kind of using your common sense surmise the fact that sema doesn't want you to really know what went wrong with the exam because if they tell you what went wrong with the exam then you will fix it immediately you will take immediate measures so if you are someone who's going to fail five times then you might actually only fail once or twice maybe so this is something that i see as a cause for them not sharing examination feedback and if they have another reason i invite them to tell the world i don't really care because they've been doing it for decades now and the damage is already done but in the future if they want to correct those errors then of course they can come forward explain these matters why we didn't do this but for now this is what it seems like they don't want to help students fa- pass the exam as soon as possible they want to delay it as long as possible and by doing so what they do is once a student gets hooked into the qualification ultimately it's an endless cycle you prolong the student life cycle so if a student has the true potential with the right guidance with the correct feedback which is impaired by poor quality tuition and lack of examination feedback if there's a student who has the potential to clear the qualification in 3 years now the student is stuck in it and i've known students who definitely had the veracity and the capability and the ability and the wisdom to clear it 
in one attempt all the papers i know students who've been stuck for 5 years 8 years students who have come to me saying i've been in this for 12 years you won't believe me my friend subhanallah this is all very funny so if you are a highly capable student let's say you know your average in school is at 95% 90% and you are 100% sure that anything you get into these kind of situations your english is quite good you have ielts 7 7.58 level english because the english really starts to kick in at the case study examinations now the first few exams right the first five and then three first eight exams in a qualification like sema it's not really based on english you don't really need good english but then comes the first case study exam at the objective or the operational level then you start getting a little bit of a heat something starts burning up if your english is poor and you realized i've spent already i've spent one and a half years or one year doing these papers i'm already eight papers into this i'm already in the second level at the final exam the case study exam and my english is weak and i'm really struggling now what am i going to do i'm going to go for an english class so with mediocre english the tendency for you to fail is even higher but this is not something no anybody talks about when they pitch the qualification when they market the qualification everybody is assuming so beautifully that your english is perfect i have no idea how many students i have met who have struggled purely because of their english they are the best students in their native language in their schools but purely because of the english they have struggled and some students spent hundreds of thousands of rupees back home in my country i know many cases and then had to just give up because they realized this is not something that was sustainable in that short period of time only because they were not told what to expect because most of the time you know students say hey my english might be bad i'm not sure and what do the people who are marketing these qualifications who are inviting you to these qualifications say hey don't worry about your english don't worry about the english please the english you know when you do these first few papers you easily catch up and yes some do catch up but not all if there are 100 mediocre english or weak english students maybe 10 maybe 20 catch up 75 80 drop out struggle drag they desperately latch on to it and some after 10 years and failing 15 times different papers at different stages they start to somehow see some rain a uh, ray of sunshine at the end of that tunnel and they are exhausted and they actually come out of cima hating it they hate it so much they never recommend it so again i have to remind you this is not a direct discouraging for you to consider it i'm just giving you a few legitimate reasons for you to consider in terms of a negative shade as well because you have a million reasons from a positive shade by these tuition providers and organizations and i have one final point it's the colonization model see most of these chartered qualifications are they're chartered by who right they're chartered by the king of england so if you look at the countries that these qualifications are quite famous and a lot of they have a lot of students you know it's the colonies it's the colonies of imperialism right the king and queen you know um they colonized uh, pre second world war pre first world war you know very well the story of the the british empire and they colonized and in these colonies once they realized these were brainy people oh the things they have done between the period of since they realized that imperialism is not going to work so this was around late 19th century they realized that okay we cannot really continue in this model uh, you know trying to capture countries because countries people were waking up and they were fighting for their independence and we know countries like india india gained independence in 1947 uh, south africa 
under mandela's leadership for a very long time was under an apartheid state my own country sri lanka uh, is considered to have gained its in- independence from the british in 1948 so you know many of the african nations many of the south asian nations were colonized so if you look at a trend a very easy trend to identify is that if you go to a website like cima or icc and look at their markets the countries where they are in you will see the countries where they have been for the longest time period is in the colonized countries because those were the seeds they planted before they purely left before they took all the white people away from those countries they seeded certain plant they they planted certain seeds pardon my language to keep the money flowing they needed the income streams to continue right so one of those very well thought out methods of bringing in money from outside into the uk into the old british empire is the chartered qualifications which have been chartered by the the king of england so called not my king i don't care and i don't believe in that nonsensical nonsense but many people do so the money keeps flowing back if you are a sima student imagine how many pounds you've paid if you are a sima student if you are anyone who who has 5 minutes of time just estimate the number of students registered annually for the past 10 years in your respective country and i can do that easily for a country like sri lanka or india or bangladesh or malaysia any of these countries and multiply the number of students annually that register with sima which means they're paying at the minimum the subscription the annual subscription if you look at the millions and millions of pounds the uk has earned through these qualifications annually that directly go as pound revenue streams into the uk into the british economy subhanallah it is unbelievable the amount of money they have made we are oblivious to this we are still living in that age where we don't mind the oppression there's someone stomping their boot under our, or on our neck and we act as if you know we are totally fine we don't think look at me you know i am sima qualified it took me 10 years to realize most of these points how foolish we are but i don't want you to continue this trend in the future i want you to make wise decisions educationally i want you to you know be very careful very thoughtful commit to long term value adding decisions right this is my uh, advice and hopefully if we connect maybe one on one we can discuss your particular matters but i hope this video in general is useful to anyone who is looking at whether to start a professional qualification and again as a final disclaimer i have to remind you i'm not discouraging you but i'm telling you that there are many reasons for you to seriously consider and this is not a complete list there are many other very serious points i have to bring up regarding not doing these qualifications especially from a islamic and a muslim perspective but those information and those opinions i will reserve them for a different video inshallah taala may allah subhanahu wa taala help you and guide you and may allah subhanahu wa taala protect and bless the oppressed in this world all around the globe assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh